All right, hello all you people out there. This is Michael of Two and a Half Students, and welcome back to another Game Maker tutorial. Now, we have this game, and it does stuff, and um, it has HP and uh, enemies and stuff that you can jump on, or shoot with tiny little pieces of rod. I don't even know what those are supposed to be, but you can shoot them with them anyway. Now, uh, this is great and all, but the room is a little small. There's not all that much space to do very much. It's pretty much restricted to just what's on the screen. What if we want to make the room bigger? What if we were going to say, uh, extend this to how about 640 by, or rather, um, 2460 by 480? And then uh, you have a little bit more space to work with. I'm going to just do a little bit of quick level design. Excuse me a minute. And let's make something like this and uh, run the game. That's a little more space. Uh, maybe put an enemy or something there. I'll just stick a couple of those in there, because why not? run the game. This looks really weird. You can see the whole room on one screen. Um, it's stretched so it'll all fit on one screen. Uh, that's uh, that looks really weird when you jump because the uh, proportions of horizontal and vertical scale are different. Um, yeah, this doesn't look very good. I don't think this will make a very good game. And pretty much all platforming, side-scrolling games, Super Mario and what have you, uh, you can only see part of the room that you want to be seeing at one time. And the uh, what you see will scroll with the player, and then it's all nice, and it, uh, it looks pretty cool. But we don't have that here so far. So we're going to need to be messing with this tab called Views. So let's go over there in the Room Editor, and you have a couple more options. You might have gone and messed around with these on your own. You might have not. Let's check Enable the use of views to basically turn them on. Uh, we're going to be... You have a list of views... Uh, I didn't mean to do that. You have a list of views here, and uh, not all of them say visible when room starts. In fact, by default, none of them do. Uh, not until you check this little box down there. And when you do that, uh, let's let's just run the game now and see what happens. So now, we can see that we only see part of the room. It's, it's wonderful, we can uh, we can move around, but it doesn't follow the player. All right, so we're, we're just running off the screen. There's not all that much we, that we can do. It's not that interesting. You can't see where you're going off the screen. So let's, uh, let's close out of that. And let's have a look at some of these other parameters. Viewing the room, Let's see, I'm going to scroll over here and uh, focus on this corner of the room right now. Uh, it says 640 by 480 and 00, zero width and height, all that fun stuff. And if you were to change this a little bit, say 120, uh, you might notice that this little bounding rectangle has moved over a little. That's the default view in the room uh, where you see when the game starts. You can see now I ran the room and it's moved over a little bit uh, from the side. You may also notice that the health bar is a little bit weird. I will be dealing with that at the uh, at a later point in this video, the default position and everything. Port on screen, if you move this over, uh, do that say, you'd see that the game window has shifted a little bit. You have this empty space in here on the left side. Um, that's basically, port on screen is basically where in the game window it's positioned. So if you really wanted to make it complicated, it's more than one view, uh, you could do that. You could say, I don't know, I'll get to that later. It's sort of complicated if I didn't explain the rest of it first. But port on screen is usually 0, 0 for x and y, and the width and height are the size of the, uh, the game window. Uh, in this case, that'll be 640 by 480. In another case, it might be 1020 by 7, or 10, 1280 by 720, rather. Uh, 1020, yeah, that's a really weird size. Now, lastly, arguably the most important is the object following. And this is what, if the room is to scroll, um, this is what the, the room would follow. So if you were to run the game now, as I'm just going to do. Uh, this is... that still doesn't look right. I'll, I don't care, I'll deal with that later. Uh, let's... no, move, thank you very much. If you were to move... Oh, I was in the wrong view. This is a... I was focusing on view 1, which is invisible at the time, so you wouldn't even notice. So we're going to be able to get rid of that. Now we're going to run the game. You'd think I would rehearse this before I start and stuff, but uh, as it is. So that annoying rectangle on the side is gone. And why are we not following the player? Oh, I knew that. Darn it, you really would have think, think, thought that I rehearsed this before I, uh, I did this, but apparently not. But now you can see that the, the, the room is moving, yeah. Now you can see that the, uh, when the player moves to the side, the, uh, the camera is also moving. And you can do a couple of fun things. You can, uh, you can move to the left, to the right. There's a couple of parameters you might want to mess with um, down here under object following. 
Horizontal and vertical border is the how close you can get to the side of the game window before the view starts scrolling. And you probably want to make it a little bigger than 32 because that's kind of not very... That's kind of close to the edge. Uh, you might have noticed that I really couldn't see what was coming up in front of me because it was so close. I'm going to say the horizontal border is going to be, oh, I don't know, 160. And vertical is going to be... Let's make it not quite that big. How about a 120? Well, the vertical doesn't come into play here because the height of the room is the same as the, uh, height of the game window, so it's never going to scroll. All right, so now uh, that's a little bit better. You can mess around with those other settings if you want to. I can I can now see what is coming up in front of me, although the uh, the movement code is wrapped sticking, and I might want to rewrite that a little. If I do end up doing that, I'll make another video on it, but uh, it's not too important. If you fail around with it yourself at this point, you should be able to figure out how to fix it. H-speed and V-speed, you may remember those from horizontal and vertical movement speed of the player from a couple of video videos ago, I believe, when I was talking about movement and gravity. Uh, this is how fast the room scrolls. If it's negative one, it's going to instantly follow the player. Uh, so if you were to, say, teleport to the other side of the room, um, it, the view would instantly move with you. If it was something like, um, say, two... When I, were, when I would move the player, uh, the room isn't going to scroll at the same speed as the player, and you can see it's still moving, uh, even though the player is not, and it's going to just catch up to it. Uh, that could be good or bad, depending on what you want to do, but negative one is instant moving, and I'm going to just keep it at that, because it's um, I usually like the way that looks better than, uh, than otherwise. Now, the elephant in the room, as it were, heh, <laughs> room, is that... I'm going to start the game again. When I move, the health bar stays where it is. And that's really not very good because you don't want to, say, um, lose the health bar if you're to walk too far away from the player. That's really not very good. Uh, or you can just draw it above the player's head, but then it, it's the player that the person is like moving around with the keyboard. It's special. You want to make it different from the enemies and stuff. Now, to deal with that, you need to slightly alter the draw code. Where's the player object? Here's the player object. In the draw event, that's, uh, okay, the code window has gotten a little bigger than I would have wanted it to. Thank you, dual monitors, for screwing stuff up for me. But instead of just absolute 32-32, you're going to want to change this a little bit. So you're going to want to draw the health bar at 32 pixels to the right relative to the corner of the room, the edge of the room. And to do that, uh, you are able to access all of the variables that you set uh, in the room view editor in code. So you could say uh, view, x view, and that will get the, uh, basically the x starting position of the view. And you can just treat that as any other variable. You can even assign it as a value if you want it to. If you want to say write a cutscene where you're moving the camera around to focus on different, I don't know, NPCs or something like that. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing down here. And I'm going to want to do that to the other x variables. Let's see, this is another one. Uh, X view. Now, there we go. And when you're in the room, uh, you can see that um, when you move, the HP is going to move with you, and that's really good. So this game's looking uh, it's wor it's looking like it's working in the, like working condition now. Um, but yeah, that's that. So you can do this with Y also. In this case, it doesn't matter because did I spell that right? No, I didn't. I really shouldn't write and type at the same time. It hasn't been going very well today. Uh, in this case, it doesn't matter because, once again, the height of the room and the height of the view are the same. But if you were to make, say, a really big map, you'd want to do that. Um, you're on the game again, and it'll, be, it'll basically look the exact same uh, right now. And if you want to, you can make the room uh, taller and see where that goes, but I'm not going to do that. Now, I mentioned uh, multiple views in the room earlier. And because why not, I think I'll go and mess around with that. So I'm going to set up this room, and I'm going to change the port and screw in a little bit. How about 200 to make it a little bit bigger? And uh, view 1 is also going to be activated. And view in room is going to be, say, let's move it over to the end. Uh, how about somewhere down this end of the room? And it's going to be, what What would that be? 250, 60, 2, uh, 230, 60 for x. So we're going to say 2360. Uh, zero width is going to be 200 and height is going to be 480. Port on screen is going to be zero zero. Width is going to be 200 and uh, height is going to be 480. And it's not following an object and it's just going to stay there. It's just going to show us the end of the room. 
Uh, as you can see, it looks sort of like it wraps. It's kind of weird, but we are going to be moving over. If you want to do, you could draw like a, uh, a separating bar in draw code so that you can see like between them uh, if you really wanted to. Come on. I should really increase the movement speed and stuff. God, this guy's like a turtle. It's almost like the protagonist in your usual horror games. But now you can see that you have the player in both the... Uh, this half of the screen and this half of the screen. And that's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, you can make multiplayer games where uh, you have multiple views to focus on um, the different playable characters if you really want to. I just thought I'd throw that out there. It's not something that you see every day in Game Maker, but uh, I think it is good to know that you can do things like that. So, uh, that is going to be it for this part of Game Maker tutorial. I will have this file available for download in the description of this video. Um, <clears throat> I will include this piece with the, uh, the multiple views to make it easy if you want to mess around with that, but uh, for now, if you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see me cover in the future, let me know. Uh, I will probably be getting into 3D eventually. I know there was somebody who was asking me about that earlier, but rate, comment, and subscribe, watch more of the stuff I have uploaded, and I will see you later.